and um, at the same time, at how not really different of a world. You know, some things really haven't changed. Um, right. But, but we're, we're we're making the most of it, however way we can. Um, and you know, I'm I'm confident and praying that we that we're going to get through better on the other side. Don't know when that other side is, but uh, but we but know it's there. Right. Yeah, we know we it's there. All right. Yeah, I think we're going to be all right. Um, well, good evening to the, to the rest of the, the EC Head Consultant Notary family. Uh, for folks who don't know me, my name is Ray. I'm a Chief Tax Officer at Priority Finance. Um, my, my firm does uh, helps a lot of entrepreneurs with taxes, bookkeeping, and LLC formation. Uh, but today I wanted to focus on um, a specific service that um, I'm sure if you've spent any, you know, any considerable time in the entrepreneurial space, you've at least probably heard of um, and maybe even have even uh, paid for or checked out yourself. We just wanted to give some folks some general tools um, to look at. Uh, back in July, I did a presentation um, on Taxes 101 for Notaries that's on YouTube. And so if you are interested in some specific tax um, advice, maybe- Mr. Pryor, hold on We have some people that need to mute themselves. Betty, mute, thank you. I just muted her. Okay, sorry about that. No, no worries at all, no worries at all. We're all- trying to figure out the Zoom thing. And I've had many embarrassing moments when I thought my mic was muted and it was not. So. <laughs> we oh, know about that. So yeah. have we. Oh, so have yeah. we. <laughs> yeah, this is some crazy stuff I've seen too. I ain't, I ain't said nothing wild, but, but, but there's some, this some interesting stuff that you could see. Uh. So anyway, um, just for the folks who, who, uh, who are new, um, uh, I did a presentation um, back in July on some tax tips and advice specifically for notaries and loan signing agents. And so if you are interested, um, it's on YouTube and the title of it is Taxes 101 Notaries. It pops up pretty quick uh, when you Google it. So if you are interested in that, uh, that, that's something that you can watch and take a look at. And if we have some time at the end, which I think we will, um, I'm, I'm more than happy to answer any questions if there are, there are some lingering things for that as well. Uh, Here's our agenda tonight. Um, pretty pretty straightforward in terms of the three steps in our, our pathway here. I'm gonna talk a little bit about what QuickBooks is. And um, for folks who are familiar with QuickBooks, obviously it's not the only service out there. I'm gonna show you some other software tools that you can use. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna walk through a live demo of QuickBooks. And so uh, the first time that you log in or when you log back in um, to your account, um, you won't be you know nothing will be too much of a shocker for you. You will have at least seen it once before. Uh, and then at the end, we'll just we'll just answer some questions. You know, there are a lot of things about technology and software that's just kind of, you know, I've, I'm kind of working my way through most of the steps, but I really need a question on this. And then so I'm, I'm hoping to budget a lot of time at the end just for, to troubleshoot with folks if they're having any issues or have any lingering questions. Uh, just a quick uh, recap of what um, my company does. And so I'm going to walk through QuickBooks um, and, and handling bookkeeping is one of the things that, that I do for, for, um, for even for some folks that I've uh, met through uh, this notary community, which has been great. Um, and so, if you if you're look if you're listening now, or if it's throughout the presentation, you're looking at this and you're like, man, I'm I'm paying attention. I'm kind of getting how QuickBooks works and how I'm able to do this. But honestly, my business is at a point where I I don't want to be spending my time doing this. Man, you know, you don't need to have major. You don't need to have studied accounting. You don't need to be you know amazing with numbers in order to do this stuff. Um, but it does take a little bit of time. And so if, if for whatever reason, whether it's interest or time investment, that, um, that, that you're looking to outsource some of these services, um, we, I'm more than happy to have that conversation with you. So we'll just start with a little bit of what QuickBooks is. Short and sweet, it's a bookkeeping software owned by Intuit. Um, and I don't have a whole lot of slides on here because I'm going to let QuickBooks do um, do enough marketing uh, for itself. And so I've just clicked on the website here um, just to give folks an idea. But if you are a business or if you're an entrepreneur or, or pretty much if, even if you're a nonprofit even, um, making sure that you have your books um, handled uh, correctly and accurately and that you stay in compliance is gonna be really, really important for a lot of different reasons. Um, one of the biggest reasons that, that I talk to most folks about is about taxes. And obviously taxes are really important in that um, Everybody has to pay them at some point. Um, if you're smart and you have a strategy, you get to pay less and less and less, especially as an entrepreneur and as a business owner. Um, but it also is most likely for a lot of business owners, especially at the beginning, uh, one of your biggest expenses is just going to be taxes. And so if, if, if you're not paying attention to your biggest line item, um, you're going to be missing out. Are you going to be overpaying Uncle Sam to, to you know, you're going to give me donations to the government for not really doing a whole lot for you in return. You know, if we lived in a different country and society where 
I thought giving the government money would be a good investment and, you know, maybe they would do good with it. Then it would be a completely different conversation when we talk about taxes and whether that could be a that could be a way that you could use philanthropy. We don't live in that kind of world. Right. So we want to we want to keep as much as we can for ourselves. Um, but if you have walked into your tax professional's office or you walked into, you know, to do your taxes at the end of the year and you own a business, if you don't have any of this stuff, it makes it very hard for me to find any of your deductions without um, putting you at risk um, and, uh, for um, an audit or putting you at risk for a lot of red flags of, of additional inquiries because you don't have all of these things that you were doing throughout the year. And so QuickBooks is one of these softwares that will handle all of that for you, um, for your business. Um, QuickBooks is the biggest and most popular one, which is why I'm going to focus most of my time on it. This is the one that most people use. I do have a bunch, uh, I, mean, I do have a couple, excuse me, a couple other ones that you can check out to just compare for pricing. Um, I'll be honest, if you're not uh, in the accounting world, if you're not in the bookkeeping world, the differences across these platforms won't really mean much to you, but I at least want you to know the different names so as you're making your decision for your business, um, you, you, you're at least doing your due diligence. Another one is called Xero, um, which, is, which is probably uh, besides QuickBooks, it might even beat out QuickBooks in the accounting world in terms of folks like myself who like to use Xero the most. Um, but another one I wanna highlight um, is called Wave. And I like Wave because it's free. And that's that's about as simple as it is to get to it, right? QuickBooks is not free. Uh, Zero is not free. Um, anything that is free usually is lower quality than things that you pay for. But for the most part, especially for you know this this webinar is, is is designed for folks who might be new to entrepreneurship, especially if you're just getting started. Wave will be free and give you everything that you need. Um, to get going. So those are those are some some other ones that are similar to QuickBooks. We're going to dive into QuickBooks um, just to take a look at this one. It's the biggest and most popular, um, but you do have some other options. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time going into the plans and the pricing and oh, I've got my my wife coming in with groceries. Miss Ed, there's Jada in the back. I don't know if you, I don't know the last time you saw her or anything like that, but, but she says hello. Um, but hey, um, baby, what's she cooking? <laughs> Hello. I, I don't <laughs> know. Now you're all grown up. You're all grown <laughs> up. What you cooking tonight? I'm not sure. <laughs> Look at this. At seven, like I'm going to say nothing. <laughs> Good to see you. You too, baby. Um, but I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time diving into the pricing and the plans. All of that is stuff that a simple Google search will do. You can read all that on your own. I just want to highlight before we dive into the live demo, the different things that QuickBooks can do. One of them is it can handle all of your accounting and that's going to kind of handle the influx of all of your different transactions, your inflows, your outflows. It will uh, code all of those different transactions correctly, make sure they're going into the right categories. And that'll be a really easy way for you to get your profit. You know, and if you're especially, you know, we've all kind of been, you know, we've all started our first business or so. Um, you're kind of kind of in that hustle stage, right? Where you're just kind of, you, you kind of going off of a gut feeling and an instinct to know that you bringing in more money than you're making out, but you may not know the actual figures. QuickBooks can be a real easy solution for you to know exactly what those numbers are right all the way down to the penny. So that's one thing. Another thing that they can do is if you are at a position um, with your business where you are hiring other folks, they have a payroll system that they can run. For, you know, So there are a lot more responsibilities that come with being an employer than just, than just being an employee for sure, but then just being self-employed as well. Once you start bringing other people on and using your business as a platform to create jobs, there are some other costs and systems you have to have in place. QuickBooks can help you do that um, it, it, when, when you reach that stage. And the last thing that, that QuickBooks does, and it's something that a bunch of other uh, software do, um, is you can collect payments through QuickBooks too. You know, some people use Square, uh, some people use Stripe, some people use um, you know, a bunch of different uh, PayPal. Some people use a whole bunch of different systems for merchant processing. QuickBooks is one of your options. Um, they, they all talk and they all communicate with each other. So they're all around the same price. You know, it's, it's maybe like two and a little bit more cents per transaction or two or so percent uh, yes. per transaction plus a little piece after that. So, um, but those are the few, the major things that, that QuickBooks can do for you um, is accounting, payroll, and if you want to collect payments when you're engaging with your clients, um, or if you want to send them an invoice and they want to pay directly through that invoice rather than having to go through a bunch of different channels, QuickBooks is kind of your one-stop shop for those things. 
Um, QuickBooks is one of the many companies that the, the, the major parent company called Intuit owns. Um, I'm sure most people have heard of TurboTax. Um, most people, may, some people may have heard of the personal finance app called Mint that kind of helps you budget and save. All of that is under the same family. And so you can find a lot of great technology and software um, with QuickBooks. Um, and so I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of, of the stuff that they do. The main thing that I'm, the, the reason why I thought it was worthy to, to spend some time doing this is because um, I do have one, one disagreement with them. And it, it is that um, QuickBooks, especially once your business starts, business finances get a little bit more complicated, that this is something that you can just do on your own. Or this is something that you can just kind of pick up in your free time and just kind of do. If your business is getting to a, a, a level that's pretty legitimate and there's a lot of traffic and there's a lot of complicated transactions going on, um, most likely you won't have time to be doing all of this. And so I'm hoping to at least give you some shortcuts on how to get started and some things that, that are kind of a quirky about the system um, so you can use those. Um, but these are, these are at a high level, the different things that QuickBooks can do. I'm gonna go into a live demo now where we're gonna kind of look at a, uh, kind of like a dummy company. It, it doesn't actually exist, but, but it's a demo that, um, oh, I gotta do my, make sure I'm not a robot here. Um, it, it, it's a, a fake company that, that uh, QuickBooks has put into the system to allow people to play around with it and, and test it out and see if it'll work with your business. I'm gonna walk through just a few things um, that, that will be most important for people when they're just getting started. Um, and then folks who are experts or folks who have been in the QuickBooks space for a while, I'm hoping that the, at the end, um, we'll, we'll have some time to, to answer some questions and we can go into, um, we can go into more of the nitty gritty and the details and some advanced things here too. Okay, just letting this thing load, but um, all right. So this is, your, this is your home dashboard. So whenever you, if you choose to sign up um, or if you, if you know, the, uh, uh, something that a lot of our clients do is that they have QuickBooks but they have uh, folks like us um, join their accounts as accountants to manage it for them, but they have their own QuickBooks. This is the dashboard that you're gonna be looking at. And this is the homepage. Uh, once you pass the setup guide, you won't have a whole lot of that stuff here, but today we're gonna pretend that we're all Craig's design and landscaping services. Um, if you keep on scrolling down, you can find a few different major buckets here. Uh, one is your invoices. And so depending on your line of work and depending on how you run your business, um, if, if you are primarily a cash based business where you have people pay you right up front after you deliver a service, invoices won't be all that important to you because you will have already gotten paid for what you do. But if you are um, any other type of business where um, you have folks either make a deposit down with you, um, if you're doing a really large transaction, or if there's a really large purchase and you give them an, you know, a certain time frame to pay, invoices is, is a great way to track um, in QuickBooks, how much money you're owed from other people, how much uh, money that they've already paid. And so you don't have any issues with billing with, with your clients or customers. QuickBooks will track all that for you. Uh, another, uh, these other three boxes down here are the big ones. Expenses is gonna be probably the most important one that, that um, will definitely, that QuickBooks can, can be a lifesaver in terms of just knowing where your, where, where your expenses are. Uh, sales is obviously all of the income that you're generating. You can keep track of how much money, uh, top line revenue your business is actually coming in. And all of that matters at the end when we go to profit and loss, right? The, the net income is the number that we care about the most. This is how much you actually get to keep. And this is the number that you actually get taxed on. Right? So, so very, very different than employees. When you get your paycheck, um, they take taxes out right away, but they take it off of the uh, that whatever your top salary is, right? Before you expense, before you spend any of your money, before any of these expenses. But as an entrepreneur and a business owner, you only pay taxes on whatever is left. So it, it, you can be strategic, um, especially if, if you if you if you link with a tax professional and accounting professional to uh, figure out a way to actually make that number look as small as possible, so your tax bill is as small as possible, while actually keeping a big. Um, portion of your profits and all of it is 100% legal. You just got to know how the tax game works. So these are the top four, you know, top four um, starter pages that you'll need. I'm going to head over here to um, bank accounts over here. This is probably where uh, QuickBooks right when you log in, this is a demo account. So it didn't do that. This is where you need to start, right? What you don't necessarily want to have happen with your QuickBooks is that you are basically doing the old school pencil and paper ledger, similar to what a lot of notaries do with, um, with their, um, 
with your with your journals to keep entries, right? That 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 that's works. That's how you know the notary world works. But when it comes to your accounting, you're gonna want to have a lot of stuff automated, right? Because that takes a lot of time, right? And part of what you charge and what you pay people to do is for your time to keep all of those files organized. This is a service that you can use um, that will cut hours out of your day without having to do that. All if you just link a bank account, you know. So it's it's highly recommended across, you know, the entire entrepreneurial world that you need to have a business bank account. You know, if, if entrepreneurship is something that you're taking seriously, and uh, especially if you have an LLC or some sort of entity that you own that, that, that houses your business, having a separate business bank account is going to save you a lot of headaches. It's going to save me as your tax professional or whoever your tax professional is a whole lot of headaches. Um, and it's going to save in case you get in any trouble um, with the courts or with the IRS, it's going to save you a lot of headache, especially in those cases. Getting a separate bank account is huge. Um, and you can link it directly to QuickBooks. So every single time your statement posts every single day, every 24 hours, QuickBooks will, will kind of take all of that data directly from your bank. You don't need to log in more than once. You don't need to do this over and over again. Um, it's kind of similar to setting up for a direct deposit. You put in your routing and account number and QuickBooks will kind of do the rest. But the reason why setting up a bank account, especially a business bank account, is important um, is because and if, you, if you look over here on this left side, we're going to go over to the banking tab now, is that this is where you're going to spend most of your time, is that all of your transactions are going to come in, right? You're going to have all your different bank accounts if you do have more than one. Um, all of them are going to come in, but QuickBooks is, is this computer. It doesn't actually know what any of this stuff is, right? It doesn't know what books by Bessie is. It doesn't know what the company A Rental is. It doesn't know who Pam Seats is or what you bought at Hicks Hardware or, or, or anything like that. Um, you know, it's only going off of that little line item that comes in your bank statement. If you've looked at your bank statement, sometimes there's not a whole lot of information. there. Sometimes you can't even tell necessarily, um, depending on what processors, you, whoever you spent or got money from, you can't even tell who was it from, right? It just says something weird or, um, or something like that, especially if you're doing transfers, right? If you're transferring from Zelle or transferring between banks or anything like that, the bank does not necessarily know and QuickBooks is not going to know what that was actually for. You know, so if if I'm looking at a one thousand two hundred dollar expense right here on the third item from November 10th, 2020, that would be uh, today. Right. Um, I don't know whether that means I bought a fancy new computer and I put it in my office. So that's, you know, a computer or technology expense that I can deduct. Or I don't know if I just kind of, uh, you know, took a client out to eat and, and blew it off on a, on a fancy dinner downtown. Or I don't know if I bought a car using my business. Um, I don't know if, I, I really don't know anything about what that is. That's why you're gonna spend a lot of your time in your banking, in this banking session, going through and selecting what all of these actually are. And this, the, the setup and then the display is absolutely beautiful, right? This looks like you know a 21st century display. It's very, very easy. They even have an app that allows you to do it. But the main thing, that most people mess up is on this screen right here, right? Every time you click on a transaction, it'll, it'll kind of give a drop down menu of a few options and a few different things that you can use to describe it. Um, it'll have the bank detail. That's just straight from your bank statement. And there's nothing more that it will know besides that, right? There's nothing else that we'll be able to provide. It has vendors and customers. So if you know that uh, you buy from the same, uh, you, buy your, you buy paper from Office Depot every single, maybe every other week, for your notary business, obviously, because paper is super, super crucial for notaries and loan signing agents. You could keep track of how much money, not only do you spend in general on office supplies, right, the general label, you could keep track of specifically how much do you, you give to Office Depot. And so you can set up vendors and customers here, right? So here they have books by Bessie. Apparently that's a vendor that they have here. Um, they have a few other ones already um, uh, put in here, but I can also go in here and add one at any time. So if I wanna say I took a course, um, I took a notary one-on-one -on -one course with EC Head Consulting, I can just add them as a vendor. And so now I can keep track of how much money um, I'm spending with them, right? The next, uh, the next thing that you wanna pay attention to is the category, right? Category, this is where all of the inflows and outflows are gonna show up on your profit and loss statement, are gonna show up on your balance sheet on all of your financial reports. That this is the category is probably the most important thing of all of this, right? Because if you call a um, if you call money going into your account um, and you're just putting money in so that you have enough to, you know, maybe it's like an investment, right? Maybe you needed an extra thousand dollars to buy supplies for the next month or so. 
you putting in a thousand dollars, your your bank and QuickBooks are going to see that as inflow. They're not going to know whether you made a thousand dollars or whether you put in a thousand dollars unless you tell them, right? So there's a big difference between, um, you know, if we come up here to uh, let's find uh, an income, right? So let's say there's uh, let's say billable expense income, right? So so maybe we we spend some time with a client and they um, and where those are billable hours, so that that's that's income that we're able to put. That's very, very different than if it's actually more so of a transfer. And what I really want is, is an equity account. Um, and I'll, I'll just call it opening balance equity for the sake of this. That's when I'm putting money into my business. And I, I want to I you know, uh, dive into that a little bit on why that small distinction of the same exact influx of money is really, really important. Okay? If you get to the end of the year and you haven't done any of this for your business, the IRS is going to, you're, you're going to print out your profit and loss statement and QuickBooks is just going to run the quick thing. Everything that went in was income. Everything that went out was expenses. And then you're going to come up with whatever number. But if a vast majority of those inflows weren't actually income that the IRS can tax you on, those were you just putting money into your business, or that was you paying off your business credit card, or that was you um, transferring money between your business accounts, you're going to get overtaxed extremely amount, right? It, it'll look like you got paid $55 when actually you didn't get paid $55. You, you made an owner's investment into your business. That's not something you need to get taxed on. That's not going to show up on the profit and loss sheet at all. That's going to show up on the balance sheet. So paying attention to how you're categorizing all of these um, expenses and recording them either as a transfer, if it's you taking putting money into your business or taking money out of your business, um, or if it's an income or an expense that you want to categorize, those are little bitty mistakes um, that, you know, you can imagine if, you know, we've only got maybe a couple dozen transactions here, but they've only done it for a few months. Right? You can imagine if you have not done this since January and it's November, how long is it going to take you to go through every single bank transaction that your business account has ever had? It's not like they're going to forget certain ones and not capture certain ones. Everything is going to show up here. So you'll, you'll want to get into the habit of doing this consistently um, and, and not, not putting it off until the end. I always recommend folks to do it at least once a month, at least once a month. Reconcile your books once a month is probably a phrase that if, if, you've, if you've explored in this world a little bit that you've at least heard before, you should at least check all of this stuff out once a month. We meet with our clients once a week because it's November 10th now. And in a couple of weeks, right, maybe around Thanksgiving, we may have forgotten what that $200 expense was that we spent on November 2nd. And if you don't know, well, we, we can't really give ourselves the benefit of the doubt. We kind of got to play it safe. And playing it safe means paying the IRS more, right? We can't say and, and, and deduct and include more expenses that minimize our tax bill when we don't even really remember what they were. Or we're looking at, um, we're looking at our bank statement and we don't really recall what any of that stuff was. I don't really remember why I transferred that money out during that time. I don't really remember uh, what that money was for. Was that income or was that somebody paying? Was that, was that me putting money in my business? It's really, really big with ATM deposits because ATM deposits don't tell you anything about where the money came from, right? It just says ATM deposit. If you um, are using an app to, uh, uh, you know, snapping pictures, doing mobile deposit for checks, they're not going to know what any of that is, right? Your bank sometimes... Uh, takes a picture of it and feeds it into your bank statement, but QuickBooks is not going to get that picture. So you can you can see how easily if, if we're talking about months, even if some people even years, where you haven't gone through and done this, there's going to be a bunch of stuff that you just don't know. Right? You forget, and you know those those fifty five dollar purchases over several several months can turn into hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. All money that you could have deducted if you were doing this once a week, or you had somebody who was doing this once a week for you, um, or at least once a month. But if it comes tax time and then you hand this to your tax professional, both you and them are going to be stressed because they're going to be like, um, I'm, I'm here to file your taxes, but I'm not necessarily here to do an entire year's worth of work for you. And most likely they're going to ask for you to compensate them on that. So going through this banking section um, at least once a month, at least once a month, especially if you have a lot more traffic and your business is really booming, you should be doing this once a week. Right. Just just while it's fresh on your mind and you kind of remember what your week at the beginning of the week was like, even if it's Friday night or maybe it's Saturday morning and you're talking about something that was last week. That's a lot more fresh and top of mind than talking about something that was months ago when at that point we, we we're going to have we shouldn't be guessing. And, and I, I never like to guess 
or encourage any of my clients to guess because if you guess wrong, that has serious consequences. Whereas if you if you play it safe and just take the loss on that, um, you're, you're gonna have a lot more peace of mind as a result from it anyway. So at least doing it monthly, if not weekly. Um, the one more thing I'm gonna talk about, we, we talked about record as transfer and we talked about categorize, but we didn't talk about this middle one, find a match. And this is, this is, this is a really important one, especially for folks um, who are, uh, whoops, let me come out of here. Won't go into that yet, especially for folks who use invoices, right? So if you if you know that you have folks who um, who owe you money for services that you've already performed, um, or if you know that um, you uh, you you do a bunch of loan signings for one title company and you have an arrangement with them where you get paid uh, once every other week, right? And so you kind of tally all of the different signings that you did uh, over that entire time, and they give you a big batch payment of that, right? And so you're going to want to be keeping track of that. What, you, what QuickBooks will do is the moment that you come over here, I'll come back to the dashboard. The moment that you come over here and create, the moment you come over here and create an invoice, it's gonna receive that as income. And, and, and I won't get into the nitty gritty of why accounting works that way. It's called accrual accounting. It's, it's essentially that if you are, um, if you write down through an invoice that you perform the service at a certain dollar value, the IRS and QuickBooks is going to is going to account that as income, even if you didn't get the cash. Right. So if I do a five hundred dollar service and I close out that day um, and I put in an invoice for five hundred dollars, I now have income on my books for one hundred dollars, even though I don't have the money yet. The where the money is is completely irrelevant as it relates to accrual accounting. So what you will want to prevent from happening is is having duplicate entries, right? You don't want to have double income on the same money because that means you're paying double taxes when you only made half of that money, right? You want the invoice to match with the money once it gets deposited. So usually what happens is, is that you have an invoice. Let's see here. We'll use this as an example. Uh, we have Shara Burnett, Barnett. Um, she owes us 274 bucks and, um, and she's overdue a couple of months on her payment. So maybe I can come over here. Um, I can send her a reminder. Um, I can I can view or edit the invoice if we we come to an understanding or we need to modify the price. But when she does send me my check for two seventy four fifty, that's also going to pop over here again. But if you've already used an invoice, what you want to do instead, and QuickBooks will kind of match this up for you. They'll do some of the math for you and see if this is what you want to do. You want to click find match. Anytime you're using invoices, right? And you're being diligent about putting an invoice down the moment that you perform the service, and then you're just waiting on the money to come in, you're gonna to wanna to do find match. Because if you do categorize, right? If you click over here and say, nope, this is just a different type of income, you're gonna be taxed for $868.15 twice. And that's the whole purpose of this find match. It's kind of in fine print here. It says to avoid duplicates. We match this bank transaction to an existing record in QuickBooks. So you want to make sure that if you are, are doing this kind of system where uh, you, you have an invoice and people pay you back later, please remember to look for the find and match button, right? This is where you need to be looking because you do not want to press categorize. And then QuickBooks is going to think, oh, this is separate. This is a completely different income. She made $868.15 twice. So I'm going to, I'm going to do that, right? QuickBooks is, is an awesome machine, but it's a machine. It's a computer. It doesn't know what any of this stuff is. All it does is plug numbers, right? That's it. So unless you're being diligent about using it correctly and making sure that you're finding this fine match um, selection for invoices, that'll avoid you getting um, having duplicate transactions and you getting taxed twice, okay? Um, let's see what else we have here. This is kind of a cool uh, front screen, just so you know, when you get into the banking, you can have a bunch of different accounts here, as many as you want to. And this number 25 tells you how many transactions that you need to review. And so if you log into your QuickBooks uh, later tonight, or if you're logged in right now and you're taking a look at it and you see that that number is pretty high, that's how many transactions that your, your bank, that QuickBooks pull from your bank, that it has no idea what it is, right? And once you actually put them somewhere, it'll move into this categorized section. So I can come over here to, uh, well, let's go back to the eight. Where's the 868? We'll just say that uh, we did, well, no, that's a, that's a different kind of thing. We'll just add this, um, what other income accounts do they have? We'll just call it services income and we'll add it there. So we got 200 bucks from uh, a rental, whatever that means. 
it now pops up in the categorized category, right? So it kind of shifts over to a bin and says, hey, this has been taken care of. You can always go over here and undo, right? If you if you realize, hey, actually that was a mistake, let me go back and, and, and change where it's actually supposed to go. It's not actually services. That was me putting money into my account. Um, you can click undo and it'll go back into the for review category. Excluded is, is, is an option, but it is, it is not an option I ever recommend. What excluded means is that you are um, trying that you do not want to have this specific transaction included in your bank in your business records whatsoever, right? And that can be nice if you're thinking, man, I really don't want to have to go through all 25 or all 100 or all 300 transactions. Let me just exclude all the times I went to Chick Fil A on my business card, or let me just exclude all the times I, you know, bought something for my kids on my business card, or bought something on Amazon or whatever. Let me just exclude it because it's not related to my business. That can sound like a wise idea, but excluded means you're hiding something, right? And, I, and you're not hiding it as if it's not there, but I, I just want to make it abundantly clear is that your bank balance and whatever QuickBooks says that your balance is, is no longer going to match, right? So, so these numbers we can see our bank balance here is negative 3,621. That means we owe money, right? And then QuickBooks says that we actually have 1,201. This is what your business records say. And this is what your bank balance actually say. Anybody for two seconds can be like, look, something's going on, right? Clearly somebody, some, there's some sort of discrepancy here that's not making these numbers be the same, right? Because they're, they're, they're way off, right? How, did, how, is, how does your bank say that you have negative 3,000 something dollars, but your business records say that you have $1,201 in cash, right? Clearly you're excluding some sort of expenses. This is the trap that will mess all of this up, right? This is the first thing that if you were to ever get in a hard situation where anybody is investigating um, your business records, this is the first thing they're gonna see. They're gonna be like, well, what is all this excluded in this category? Right, well, you used your business to buy a $10,000, what? what What was this? Was this an ordinary and necessary business expense? Like, was this something that you needed? Those are the types of questions that you're gonna be asked if this excluded category ends up getting a whole lot of, a whole lot of traffic. So as best as you can, I encourage you to review them and put them in categorized. Excluding them can seem like an easy short-term solution, but eventually we we'll, might get you caught up into, um, into, into some issues that you don't really want. Um, let's see what else we have here. You can also set up rules. Um, QuickBooks will walk you through this. You know, they have different pop-up menus that say, hey, do you want to set up this? Hey, do you want to set up this? This is one of the things where you can automate certain things that, you know, if certain line items come in the same way every single time, you can tell QuickBooks ahead of time, hey, this is exactly what this is. This is exactly what you're supposed to be looking for when my business, uh, when my bank account runs through your system. And this is what it is. So you can automatically categorize it. It can do it for you, right? So if you want to create a new rule that every time, um, every time a uh, priority finance uh, bookkeeping, right? And it's gonna be money out. It can come from any account. Uh, the description is gonna contain the words priority finance and it's gonna be an expense. Um, and here's the category. Uh, we'll put legal and professional fees. It'll be bookkeeper. Um, and then the payee obviously would be priority finance. You can, you can put uh, a memo here each time that it comes through. So this can save you a whole lot of time if you know that the same things come through. So that rather than looking at 300 different transactions, you can set a rule. And if it is the same thing every single time, that, that'll automate the entire process, which can be really easy for you. Okay. I'll talk a little bit about receipts um, since uh, it's going to be really important now um, especially post COVID, I even think a lot about um, a lot about our economy as, as it relates to how how much we use cash even is a little bit different because money, actual cash is probably one of the dirtiest things um, in the planet. You can think about how much time, uh, you know, where receipts go in everybody's car and pockets or anything like that. Where does cash go? You know, and so I just want to uh, clarify something about receipts, especially as it relates to taxes. You need to have a business record for every single transaction that your business has. It does not matter what it is. It does not matter really how small it is, uh, whether it's money coming in and out, whether it's income or expenses, or whether it's an investment or a withdrawal, um, you need to have a business record. That does not necessarily mean that you need a paper receipt. Paper receipts 
uh, usually are on that like really flimsy paper. And after a while, especially if you keep a big file of them and then you come to your tax professional in April, we probably can't read some of them anyway because they've all faded, right? So in, you, in, in taking time to take pictures of every single little receipt for your business can be tedious. QuickBooks allows you to not have to do any of that, right? You need a business record. Your bank statement matched with your QuickBooks is more than enough of you doing your due diligence as a business owner. So they have it here because you can use it, right? You can upload from the computer. You can upload from Google Drive. You can match it to a transaction so that it knows that this receipt is matches up with this transaction that you're seeing in QuickBooks. But I want to release you of the burden to know that we, we don't live in, in, in the economy anymore where you need to keep track of all of these papers, right? There are some professions, notary and loan signing agents being one of them, that are very paper-based, right? Very, very heavy in terms of documentation. And there are some online tools that you can use to, to kind of cut back on the paper that you use. QuickBooks is another one of them is that you can become a, um, a paperless business a lot faster if you use one of these technologies. So the receipts is here, you can upload them at any time, but I suggest that you, that you save yourself some time and get back to actually running your business or get back to spending time with your family, not sitting here trying to be an accountant and trying to figure out how all this stuff works. Banking is gonna be your fastest and easiest way to do that. Okay. This new button is, is kind of where you can, you can go anywhere um, from here. Uh, I'm gonna scroll down to reports. And I think I might pause after this just so, because reports are kind of um, extensive, but reports is, is where all of this technology and all of this bookkeeping and this software stuff actually becomes something that you can use, right? So we can look at our profit and loss um, statement and this is what you'll send to your tax professional, right? This is what you'll send to your accountant at the end of the year and say, hey, I kept track of all of my business expenses and my net profit at the end of this year, he's got quite a few expenses, is 1,642 bucks, right? And this is the number that you'll be taxed on, right? You can run a bunch of different ways you can slice and dice these reports, right? You can run them for a bunch of different time frames. Um, you can run them for the day, you can run them for the week, you can run them for the year, you can run them for certain months, you can run them between certain days. There's a bunch of different options that you have um, I won't dive deep, too deep into it just for the sake of time, but just know that there's a lot of powerful reports here. Profit and loss is going to be um, probably the, the, the main one that you use. And that's a big reason why it's already started as one of your favorites. But if you look as I'm scrolling here, there are dozens more reports that you could run, all of which could provide amazing insight on your business, all of which could provide a lot of good um uh, the ability, a lot of good data so that you can make data driven decisions about, you know, maybe we need to spend less money on this marketing campaign and more money on this marketing campaign. I'm realizing that over 50% of my income actually comes from me selling this service. So maybe I should focus on that service, selling more of that rather than trying to get other people to buy this thing that ends up being breadcrumbs for me on my profit and loss. There's a lot of powerful information that you can run here. But like I said before, if you don't know what a lot of these are, then you're going to need somebody to break these down for you. Most likely, you're going to want to have somebody run these for you and break them down for you, whether that's every week or whether that's every month, because some of them can be a little bit more complicated and some of them are not, right? A great thing that you can have here is that you can get a list of all your customers, right? So if you use QuickBooks to, to manage your, your, your client, um, your clientele, you can get a real easy list of their names, their email addresses, their phone numbers, and their mailing addresses. So maybe when it comes around to the holiday season um, and you want to send uh, all of your clients a little gift, maybe for Thanksgiving or for Christmas, you have a, of a, a really easy list that you can pull up and get all of that information really, really fast. Right. So it has a bunch of um, fake names and phone numbers and email addresses. So QuickBooks can be great for that, too. It's not a full fledged um, CRM system. And, you know, I wouldn't necessarily recommend you, you use it to replace um you know, a MailChimp type thing or, or anything like that that you may use to keep track of, of the people that you use, that you do business with, but it can do some of these other things as well. Um, and then you can create custom reports. Um, if there's a specific report that's not super standard, um, you can have that run every single time. Uh, management reports are a very similar thing. Um, but this is really the only reason why QuickBooks needs to exist, is if you can't look at your profit and loss statement and make sense of it, if you can't understand which streams of income are the greatest for you and why. If you can't look at which um, expense categories are the largest for you and why and make decisions based off of that, then basically you're just doing bookkeeping just to do it, right? But you, you should do bookkeeping so that you can know 
the true state of your business and make decisions off of it, right? And the, the example I usually give is that I love sports. You know, you, you, could, you would never imagine, you know, watching the NBA finals, um, watching LeBron and the Lakers, and they're not keeping score. You, you wouldn't do that. You would never imagine, you know, LeBron and the Lakers, um, LeBron not caring about what his stats are at the end of the game, right? It's not necessarily that he's there to run the stats up, but that's important. Oh, oh okay. So, so this tonight, uh, you know, when I play on back-to-back nights, my free throw percentage gets down. So next tomorrow in practice, I need to make sure that I shoot uh, 500 more free throws at the end when I'm tired to make sure that I have the endurance for those back-to-back nights to make those clutch shots in the first quarter, right? But if you don't use your stats, then they're just stats. They're just numbers to, to, for nothing, really. Right. And you you can send them to folks like me and we can tell you what they are. But ultimately, you're the person that needs to know what they are. Right. The IRS does not care what your expense categories are. Right. And even your tax professional can only really regurgitate whatever you give them. Right. But you need to be able to look into these reports and understand it for yourself. You know, maybe if you're looking at discounts given and maybe you realize, man, I've been giving a lot, a lot of family discounts recently. You know, and obviously I want to take care of my people and obviously they, they, they want to support my business. But. Now it's getting to a point where my friends and family discount is really cutting into my bottom line. And I guarantee my family and friends don't want me to have a business that's not doing well. Maybe I need to let up. Maybe I need to, maybe I need to shift and pivot. Maybe I need to have a frank conversation with, with cousin, uh, you know, Nene and them about, look, next time you come in, I'm, I'm going to take care of you, but I'm, I'm going to need you to pay me for the last couple of times because it, it, it's starting to, it's starting to hamper what I'm doing. Right. You won't know that if you don't know the numbers, right. And you don't want to be going off a of gut instinct. You, you always want to have rec- not l- physical receipts anymore. You want to have digital receipts for everything that you're doing. You want to be in, an informed business owner so you can make the best decisions. Um, so reports in QuickBooks is going to be your best friend. Profit and loss is probably where you're going to spend most of your time. Um, if you are in a position where your business is applying for, um, especially government grants for COVID-19 relief, or whether you're applying for government contracts or whatever you might be doing, um, or you're joining different associations or professional associations or, or memberships or anything, um, they're going to ask you for documents like this. Right? They're, they're going to ask you, okay, so how is your business doing? And you can't be like, well, business is going well. Oh, yeah, yeah I made a lot of money last year. Business okay. is booming. Well, yeah, well, yeah, business <laughs> is booming. How, how, what is boom? You know, like, are we talking boom with, with three O's? Or are we talking boom with, with the lowercase b? Right. Like I need numbers behind what I'm talking about. Right. So th- th- that's where reports can be really helpful is that when you run into those opportunities that could propel your business to the next level, you need to have your documentation ready. Right. You don't want to be scrambling. like, Oh, oh hold on. I'll, I'll get it to you later. I'll, I'll, I'll put it together for you. You know, like, th- that's not the time to do that. Right. They're already going to move on and move on to the next application. OK. Um, another one is a balance sheet. This ain't accounting one on one. I won't break down exactly what a balance sheet does, but but essentially, um, if if you're if you're you know you're on social media, you're looking through the internet, and you're having conversations about net worth, right? If you hear about celebrities, you know, Jay and Beyonce are worth a billion dollars of their net worth. Really, what they're talking about is their balance sheet, right? It is is their assets, right? That's all of the stuff that they own and how much that's worth, minus all of their liabilities. That's all of the debt that they have, and then the equity is at the end. Right. There are certain businesses and the balance sheet becomes really, really important once you really, really start growing and you, you get a lot of um, you get a lot more equipment. Maybe you get your own office. Um, maybe you, you bring on a lot more employees. Um, maybe you take on a business loan. You take on debt. Some people might have taken on some of the um, small business loans that are really, really low interest from COVID-19. You may have been able to take advantage of those. One of those is going to show up here in your liabilities. But a balance sheet will tell you about the healthiness of your business. Um, and, and QuickBooks allows you to run, run really nice reports on all these different things, um, similar to the profit and loss. Um, and it's 7.45. I'm gonna breeze through a couple more things just to, to highlight them for you. Sales is where you can see all the money that comes in. Um, you can do projects or you can focus on you know, certain things. And if you wanna see how this specific sector of my business is doing, you can do that as well payroll we discussed payroll is an additional expense so so you you want to be on the lookout for that um you can also do some prep some prep for your taxes you can keep track of mileage which is especially important for notaries is if you're a mobile notary and you're driving around uh, you can use quickbooks um quickbooks has an app that can trap your mile track your miles for you and automatically feed it right into this so you won't need to worry about it and it's already got the the, the 2020 um, mileage deduction there for you so you can make the best decision for your business for that um and this is all stuff that your accountant should know, right? So, so you can you can 
um, add an accountant at the end here if you have somebody um, who uh, who handles your books for you or is a little bit more well-versed in this or has a little bit more time. Um, this is this is where all of our clients use us. You can just type in their email address and they'll be added um, as, an, as, a, as, a, as an account to your file. So they'll be able to do everything that you're doing, but you don't need to exchange any user and passwords. So they'll be able to see everything on their own dashboard. Okay. Um, let me think if there's anything else. The setup guide is really good, right? This is, this is you know, top of the line, 21st century technology. They're going to make it seem as if this is a very easy DIY process. Um, I kind of went through the very, 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 very simple, very, very basic baseline transactions that you're probably going to need, especially if you're going to get started. Um, if your business is leveling up, you know, and if you have a lot more complicated things, um, especially if you, have a, if, if you have an entity that you're that you're managing through this, and it's not just you as a sole prop or you as a DBA doing this, um, I recommend you at least have a conversation with somebody on how to do this. Right? You can even you can even have call somebody from QuickBooks and have them set up for you for a fee. Um, but this is not something that you can just be like, oh, I'm just gonna like let QuickBooks run on its own, and it's, it's, I'm just gonna set it and forget it, and then come tax time, it's gonna be perfect, or come when that business. Uh, application comes, it's going to be ready for me. That's not how it works, right? This is something that, like I said, you need to be combing through and be diligent about at least monthly, if not weekly, right? And if you're looking at this and you're like, man, I don't want to spend any more time on this thing than I need to, right? Then you can then you can find somebody to do that for you. That's part of the services that we offer. QuickBooks even has a thing where you can hire somebody from QuickBooks to do it. Um, there are whole industries about QuickBooks advisors that, that, that know the system well. Um, you can do the exact same thing for these other accounting softwares, right? like Zero, Wave, this is the free one um, that, that I encourage you to check out if you're looking to, um, you know, if your business is at a stage where you want to keep costs low. Um, or keep these kind of costs low. Uh, Wave is a great option. Uh, obviously, it's free. So anything that's free is going to be free, which is good, but also free, which is, you know, we don't know. Get right? what you pay for. Oh. Exactly, exactly. So, um, but if, if it does everything you need to, by all means, I, I recommend going that route. Um, but I think I'm going to pause there, um, see if folks have any questions, but I, I'm hoping that, you know, folks who may have just jumped into entrepreneurship space or just started getting a bank account or just started getting a lot of money and you're kind of like, uh, I know I'm supposed to be doing something with this and having some sort of due diligence. Okay, I've at least seen the QuickBooks thing for a little bit. I had somebody walk me through how it generally works. Um, I kind of remember that I need to categorize my expenses. I need to look for fine match if I do invoices. Hoping this will help somebody in some sort of way. Um, but uh, let me go ahead and uh, I'll just pause there and see if um, folks have any questions and then we can kind of have a conversation. It could be questions about QuickBooks. It could be questions about um, taxes. It could be questions about uh, forming your own LLC if that's something that you're interested in. Um, it could be whatever. I'm going to set it up to make sure I have the chat up and ready to in case folks have questions. But if not, we can jam out to Tamika's music. I was I was kind of bobbing and weaving over here earlier. You know, what was going before? Questions. Um, yeah. Go ahead. Question? Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Go, go ahead. ahead. OK, it's Erica. Uh, really good information. I've been using QuickBooks for about a year now, so I was able to follow along pretty good. That good. helps. Um, the customer contact list I didn't know about, the I, mileage app I didn't know about. Um, my first question is, one of my categories that I use is commission, but for my business, commission is me writing my client a check. It's not money coming to me. Mm -hmm. Is that safe <laughs> to categorize it as commission? As long as you know it's an expense and not income, right? And then you can go into um, QuickBooks here. I'll, I'll, I'll walk is real quick. I'll, I'll show you where you can do it. Um, you can set up any expense category that you really want to. You, you can set it up. Um, if you go down here to accounting and chart of accounts. Let's do here. And I see some questions in the chat, folks. I'm going to get to those in a second. So you can go to chart of accounts. This is where all of your different categories sit. And so if you just want to look at one of them, you can go to chart of accounts and look at that. The only thing that you'll want to do when you create your new one, whoops, come over here to new, uh, the account, you want to make sure you put expense, right? Because if, if, the, if they're thinking each time 
um, that this is an income. It, your bank, your bank statement will still show it as an outflow, so it'll be an income account, but it'll show it as negative, which will just be oh, weird, right? right. Like, why is it why is it negative if it's income? You know, so so you you know, in some way your 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 system will figure it out. But all you gotta do is come over, and say this is expense, and say, hey, this is uh, commission, uh, whoops, commission uh, for clients, and then you can put a description. Um, you can make it abundantly clear. This is not my income. Right. You can make it abundantly clear to be like, look, this is money that I pay my clients for for helping grow my business. Right. And helping refer other people to me. Um, but and then you can even put it as a sub account if you wanted to under some of these other expense accounts. too. But no, that's perfectly fine. Um, and, and I think that's great. You know, if you're I think that's a great business strategy, too. Um, and something that we've started doing is that, you know, you should be taking care of the people who've already been taking care of you and they could probably help you grow your business a lot more than uh, you know spending crazy amounts on marketing or something like that you might just need to call somebody and ask them to 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 refer you so um does that help answer your question miss erica absolutely um uh, real quick it does it make sense for me to use quickbooks to pay myself my, my employees are 1099 or my workers whatever are 1099 but it, does it make sense to pay myself through quickbooks uh, when you say pay yourself through QuickBooks, well, how, how do you pay your 1099 folks? Uh, PayPal, check. Okay. Okay. So you can do the exact same thing. You just want to make sure that when you do it, that um, uh, QuickBook, that you, when you categorize and go through that whole thing, you're going to want to make sure that you record that as a transfer and that's going to be an owner's withdrawal, right? You don't want to have... Um, well, and it, it honestly depends on how your business is structured. I don't know if you're a sole prop or your LLC or if you're a corporation or anything like that. Mo for most folks, um, you don't want you paying yourself to be in the same category as you paying other people, right? Because that's contractors expenses, that's 1099 stuff versus your business doing what it's supposed to do, taking care of you. So that, that's slightly different. One of them you can deduct on your taxes. The other one you can if you, if you, if you have yourself um, on your own payroll, especially if you're an S corp or something like that. But the short answer is yes, you can do that, but you're gonna to wanna to be diligent in terms of making sure each of those transactions is categorized correctly. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah. And, and when, when you sign up for um, QuickBooks, don't you have an option of self-employed or small business? You can. Yep. Yep. So they've got, um, I think they probably have like maybe eight different plans that you can choose from. Um, and what I highly discourage anybody to do is overpay for some fancy feature on QuickBooks that you end up not even using. Right. Because so for notary, would you, when, for notary, would you recommend self-employed? Self-employed, uh, I self-employed is more designed for folks who are like Uber drivers, Door Dashers, um, Lyft drivers, oh, okay. folks like that. Folks who, oh. who kind of have more consistent, um, don't really have a whole lot of complicated forms of income. But especially for somebody like you, um, who who had who was paying other people um, and who's taking money in and out of their business and, and doing a lot of different things, I would at least recommend the lowest of the small business plans. You don't you definitely don't need the, the the most expensive one. I think it's like up to you know a couple few hundred dollars a month. You don't need to be paying all of that. Um, but self employed, you might find um, some of the like intricacies that I've been talking about. You can't really. You, it, it's, it's struggling to see it. And this this is a small business overlay. I didn't pull up the self-employed screen. The self-employed screen is a lot more simple, a lot more basic. Um, the app for self-employed is a lot more straightforward. Um, it's not as well suited for folks who are, um, who um, it's more for folks who are self-employed versus folks who manage a business, you know? And, and, and there's, there's, there's some commonalities and most folks are either one at some point in their entrepreneur, entrepreneurship journey, but at least the small, the lowest of the small business is probably what you need. Okay, appreciate it. Thanks, Ray. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. No problem. Let me take a look at the. Um, let me take a look at the chat here. I know we have a few questions. How do you? Oh, when using QuickBooks for transaction, is one able to use the software providing itemized receipts to a notary client? Um, the short answer is yes. Um, if you set up. Um, especially if you use QuickBook payments, um, which we didn't really go into, um, but if you set up to use um, payments through QuickBooks where your payment, where your, um, this is, oh, it's in right here in the middle, actually, set up payments, right? If you use that, um, you can set up receipts for um, 
whatever for your clients that you would like to. Um, if you, maybe if you work for a title company and you do a bunch of different loan signings in that day, or you have a bunch of notary clients with a relationship that you have with somebody, you can put it in an invoice and itemize all of it. And then all of that goes directly to their email inbox. So there won't be any issues of, of people not remembering how much you pay them or anything like that. QuickBooks can um, track all of those, um, provide all of your people with receipts for everything that you're doing, for sure. Um, oh, I see Mr. LMR LLC, you put a follow-up question. I'm just gonna check that real quick. Uh, yes, yes, you can use it for more than one business. Yep. And so, so if you've got um, if you've got a few different things going, um, you can use it for more than one business. I recommend getting more than one account and not using the same business account for all of your businesses piled together, because then you then that that's just a mess, right? That's just something that you can't really parse through. You're going to want to make sure you get that organized. Um, but you can use um, even with the same username and password, you can have multiple accounts. Um, you can have multiple businesses under that as well. Um, so. Maybe if you want to do a notary, general notary, maybe if you want to do a loan signing, maybe you um, you also do, um, uh, I don't know, maybe you also are an insurance rep, you know, maybe you, you're an insurance broker, whatever you, uh, additional things that you do, um, QuickBooks gives you the flexibility to do multiple things. Um, Ms. Davis, how do you track transfers from a business or a DBA to a personal account? What you want to go into that is, is, is that's the record as a transfer. Um, I'll go back to the banking part. I don't know if in their in their like fake uh, account here they have an example of that. Um, let me see here. No, not really. Anyway, I can just show you. We'll, we'll pretend that the A rental services here. What you'll want to do, uh, Miss Davis, is go to to record as a transfer, and then your transfer account. And what you're going to be looking for is. Owner, and you could you could create this account if you wanted to, but most likely this is the dummy account, so they don't have it. But you're going to want to call it owner's pay and personal expenses, right? That's you transferring your money from your business to a uh, to to your personal account, or another term that you could call it um, is owner's withdrawal. No differently, you go to ATM and you withdraw your money. This is you withdrawing your money from your business. Um, and so, but you're going to want to make sure you click record as transfer, right? What you don't want to do is click categorize and log that as an expense because it's going to look like money's coming out and QuickBooks is not going to be smart enough to know, no, 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 this is not money coming out as an expense. This is me actually taking money from myself. So that record as transfer, um, when that line item comes in from your bank, um, whether you use Zelle or PayPal or however you choose to do it um, between the, between your bank accounts, record as transfer is what you're looking for. Appreciate the feedback, also, Mr. You, Mr. Pryor. Oh, go ahead, Mr. Go ahead. Could you also just call that your payroll, your paycheck, your payroll? It's like you when could. I do it every month, I just, once a month on the 15th, I transfer money from my business account to my personal account. Yep. And that's my pay for the month. That's it, right? And and so, but because you're the owner of, um, I think you, you have an LLC, right? Yes. Right. So because you're the owner of the LLC, you, the owner, the owner getting paid is not like uh, a W-2 or a 1099 type of expense. Right. Okay. And then if you're an S Corp, which, which is a presentation I'm hoping to give sometime next year, that's a completely different thing. But for you as an LLC, you're still going to want to record it as a transfer and you can call it whatever you want to, but you're going to want to call it a transfer, not an gotcha. expense. That is the main thing is that you're transferring from the business assets, which are yours because you're the owner, to the personal assets, which are also yours. That's just okay. a transfer, right? It's like going from your checking to your savings account. Money didn't go in or out necessarily, right? There's no expense or income there. It was just a transfer. So that that's that's the button that you're going to be looking for. And I think it's good that you're you're consistent. You do it once a month. Um, that that's, month? that's 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 how the best businesses do it. That that's definitely the way to go. Uh, Mr. Rowe is Wave Platform similar to QuickBooks. Man, it is the exact same thing, right? It's free. And it's, it, I wouldn't say it's, it's, it's super, um, it's not like it's unprofessional, right? Like I have a tab open over here. Um, I even have uh, one lady, uh, one, one lady who, who's a notary who, who uses Wave. It's done everything that we need. Um, and it's really, really nice, really, really sleek. We don't have any issues with it. Um, they do start charging you once you uh, accept payments or if you do payroll or if you do um, stuff like that. But this, these, these top two things, accounting and invoicing, if you need it, Wave does everything you need. So if, if you're looking for a really, really low cost option, um, just because that's, you know, the state of the world or state of your finances or whatever, um, 
Wave is something that you should check out for sure. Uh, Ms. LMR, I'm hoping we answered your question. I'll come back to you. You can you can put something else in the chat if you don't think so. Okay, Ms. Davis, good, good. Uh, Mr. Eduardo, I'll, I'll put my information. Um, I'll put my information. Uh, I'll, I'll message it to you in a second here, um, especially because things are going to be a little bit different for you um, as an attorney. Okay, I think that's all of the questions in the chat. Um, if there's anybody who wants to come off mute, I'm just going to put my, my contact information. I'm going to pass it off to Mr. Eduardo um, through the chat. And I can actually post it in the chat for everybody to see in case you have any questions. Um, or if, you know, if you're, if you're looking at me like, Mr. Mr. Ray, I, I kind of, I kind of spaced out, man. This, this is not my forte. This is not really what I do. Can you run back and show me this one other thing at a time? I'm more than happy to hop on the, on the, on a video chat with you and show you how to work these things. Um, and like I said, this is what we do for, um, for a handful of notaries and, and some other businesses as well is that, um, you know, they don't really have the time to be learning how to be accountants, uh, you know, once a week. And so if your business is at a point where, um, where you are, uh, where you're ready to outsource this type of service, um, I will say that during COVID-19, um, our monthly rate is a hundred dollars to handle all of the accounting and bookkeeping and, and, and tax types of stuff on a monthly basis for you. So if that's something that you think your business can afford, um, more than more than happy to have that conversation with you if you think this would be a good partnership. Um, but more than that, hoping that this is, is hopefully just a, a resource for some folks who might be a little bit lost or have some questions, uh, save you a little bit of time, you know, so you're not up at midnight on Tuesday night trying to figure out how to how to work this this software thing. All right. Appreciate you, Ms. Davis. Thank you for being here. Run through the questions one more time. Make sure there's nothing else. All right. Well, if there are any more quick, oh, maybe there is one more question. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Okay. So if there are any more questions, I'm going to drop my contact info information in there one more time, um, just in case you need it. Um, uh, the, you know, just, just quick things before we wrap up is that QuickBooks is one of many systems. I encourage you to do your due diligence on, on the other platforms. This is the most popular and what, what gets all the Super Bowl ads. That does not necessarily mean it's the best for your business. Um, some people, um, like uh, um, Jada's mom, who, who runs Premium Realty Group, she's old school and does it uh, all by hand and all by Excel. She doesn't use any software and she does perfectly fine. So if that's you as well, all I ask is that, that you do you and that you do it that you do it the right way, but you can do it however way you'd like to. Okay. All right, just looking through the chat. Nope. Got you, Mr. Rowe. Appreciate you, sir. Appreciate you. All right. Well, it's almost my bed done. So I don't know. That's right. Man. I think it's the, the change in the clocks got us just going to bed early. Oh, yeah. Yeah. In the morning, I'm on it, right? I like, <laughs> you know, it's only it's only, you know, seven o'clock. And I'm like, man, let's go. Like we we can do this. But then once it starts getting later at night, I'm like, man, is it really only eight o'clock? Yes. Right? <laughs> yeah so is it too is it too late to call you after we're done oh no oh, no if you want to give me a call that's fine i thought you said you were going to bed well no 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 for, for you i'll wake up for you but but no, no no i'll be up i'll be up so if you want to give me a call you can all right are there any other questions so we can go get our pajamas on <laughs> you know you already got your pajama bottoms on. You don't know that. <laughs> Man, I well, say, thank that's what I do love about about the Zoom world. Okay, the, right. You put on a nice shirt. <laughs> they ain't got enough. They ain't got enough. <laughs> Until your mama tell everybody. <laughs> oh, she did put you on blast right there, right there. But it's okay. It's okay. Wait a minute. There's a question here. I don't know if you saw this one. Maybe I, I missed oh, it. Oh, Miss Williams, the cost to form an LLC. Uh, we charge seven hundred dollars to form ours. So when you do your due diligence, you can you can use seven hundred dollars as your base mark. Um, keep in mind that the state of Texas require uh, the state of Texas is going to ask for three hundred dollars. 
uh, for every new entity that gets formed anyway. So, so 300 is, is plus a, a processing fee is what we're going to pay on your behalf. Um, but we do 700 and we, we put together a nice uh, classic binder with, with all of your stuff in it like this. Fancy. Uh, yeah. So, so, so you said, fee, let me know. Is that $300 plus the $700? No, 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 no. It's three hundred plus four, yeah, and four hundred is is us paying for stuff like this, <laughs> yeah. So, um, well, what know, if we I, just want you to put it in our hand? How much is that? <laughs> <laughs> well, it. Uh, I mean, we could barter. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I don't hey, with you. <laughs> wait a minute. Just put it in. Just put it in your hand. It's six hundred and ninety-five. Right. Right. No tax charge. No, no, no sales tax. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, this was excellent as always. Thank you so much, so much. I will be in your inbox to get you on a series for uh, 2021. Great. So be looking for that. Okay. Um, is it, does anyone have any questions? Any last minute questions before we, we uh, depart? Nothing. Okay. Again, I want to thank everyone for joining us on Tuesday. Keep in mind that we, we had this on Tuesday, but we do have another one on Wednesday. Uh, Miss Tammy Allen will be talking about uh, sources of income, different ways, you know, to have those streams of income coming in. Cause we all, if, if COVID hasn't taught you one thing, it should have been, you need multiple streams of income. Thanks. Okay. So join us again tomorrow. You'll still have to uh, register through Eventbrite and I'll send the link um, in the morning and then you'll get another one about an hour before it starts so uh, I hope to see most of you again tomorrow uh, we have our workshop one this Saturday if you have not already attended please think about doing so it is our last class for the year um, for workshop one and keep in mind also that our classes pri prices for our classes do increase in 2021 uh, the week after that, it's uh, workshop two and three on the same day. And then let's see, who else Who else do we have? November 18th, uh, we have Jamie talking about field inspections. I had a lot of people in my inbox about field inspections, so I expect that class to be very full. So try and get in early, log in early. It's only, um, I only have a spot for 100, and I've had more than that in, inquire about how to become a field inspector so i expect a good good number of people to show up for that but if we don't have anything else liz do you have anything you want to add did i forget anything i don't i saw somebody i think it was erica who had a big ass glass of wine oh, you know what erica see i private chatted you the bus me, I already messed with me about that glass. I, <laughs> I said, I oh my God, I can't wait to go get poor, not a glass of wine. I need a vodka. <laughs> I told her it was an Olivia Pope glass. Olivia Pope glass. <laughs> <laughs> but I did that privately. I just want you to know, Erica, just, you know, make sure you different, uh, see who put you on blast. And hey. who <laughs> I'm just jealous because I didn't think about doing that before I came in here. Oh, that's so funny. All right. So on that note, <laughs> I want to thank again everyone for joining us and have a good evening. Bye. <laughs> good night. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank you. Good night. Good night, Tia. Good night, Tia. Good night. I saw you over there. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. See y'all tomorrow.